Tell me, viewer, are you ready? The world you're about to enter is a weird one, filled with magic, gore, and buff waifus. If you go down this rabbit hole, heed me, for you might not come out in one piece. But if you're strong, or perhaps one associated in the arcane and taboo, join me, for we will be discussing Doro Hidoro, one of the newest and maybe most highly anticipated manga adaptations from the winter season. As always, I'll try and lead you through its story, characters, music, animation, and general fun factor. So strap in, let's go for a ride. Story Doro Doro mainly takes place in Hole, a dimension where humans are regularly experimented on by sorcerers, creating an air of constant antagonism and strife. Here we find Cayman, a resident who mysteriously lost his memories, as well as his human head, and now searches for the one who made him like this. Along with his friend Nikaido, restaurant owner of the Hungry Bug, they kill and vor every sorcerer they can until they find whoever did this to Cayman. And yes, I did not stutter there. In order to find out if the magician is the one they seek, Cayman has to nearly swallow their head to be judged by a mysterious phantom. To my scalies out there, Yes, this is the show for you. No, you don't have to watch my review to know you'll love it, but I would appreciate you subscribing anyway. On its face, it's a pretty bare bones narrative, but there is so much more behind the seemingly simple plot point. Doro Hidoro straight drops you into a completely alien world with rules and magical systems outside of the mainstream. For example, magic in the form of black smoke is cast specifically through the sorcerer's fingertips, meaning that the best way to handle a sorcerer is to cut their fingers off, which this anime is not afraid to show in gory detail. On top of that, the whole is a separate dimension from the sorcerer world whose whole population is that of, well, sorcerers. And since it can only be accessed through magic, some people from the sorcerer world can easily come to and from whole, while residents of whole are stuck due to them not possessing any magic. The gritty world and harsh situations that the residents of whole have to deal with, as well as the constant conflicts between Cayman and Nikaido against the experimenting sorcerers, set up a place where anything is possible. Combine this with a detective-like mystery scenario with magical elements, and you get a thrilling show that constantly throws more questions into the ever-expanding plot pot. Tie this with a constant villain perspective with the End Family, and it's no wonder so many people were hyped to see their manga finally get its own anime adaptation. I'm a sucker for crossing character narratives and intersecting storylines, and this is perhaps one of the biggest boons Doro Hidoro slaps onto the table. You'll have a nice heart to heart between Kamen and Nikaido, mulling over whatever information they came across, then switch to the End Family, struggling to find out for themselves who the caster was through a different means for their own purposes. To add to the layers of narratives, you've got a rich array of supporting characters whose pasts intersect with almost all of the main characters, and the complicated relationships between protagonists and antagonists start to get blurred. Each episode will drag you further into the world of Doro Doro and have you on the edge of your seat. This show is also varied with its tones, as though the general aesthetic of the show exudes edge, it can actually become pretty lighthearted at times. Dark humor is pervasive throughout the show, with some episodes just poking fun at horror movie tropes and cliches. The only regrets I have is that the show ends on a bit of a cliffhanger, as well as numerous plot points that have yet to be explained, and we don't yet know the details about a season 2 release date besides a couple OVA episodes coming out this summer. Not many shows hook me enough to want to read ahead in the manga, but I just might for this one. Characters. When your whole main story hook is about finding out who changed the face of the main character, it's best to write a main character that we care about and want to cheer on. And I'm here to say that Doro Hidoro has handled that wonderfully. Kamen is a quirky, Goza-loving sorcerer murderer that cares for his friends, especially Nikaido, and wishes to remember who he was before his accident. He can be a straight badass in one scene, the next he's happy as a clam eating Nikaido's food. The duality of man featured in Kamen is a display for everyone to see. Let's not focus too much on him, however, as there are many more interesting characters that hold up this show. Nikaido is one of the few women in anime that hit the nail on the head of what it means to have a strong female character. She holds her own just as much as Cayman in their fights, and values their friendship over most things in life. That said, her own complicated past is just as intriguing as Cayman's, giving their friendship a certain depth 
that constantly pushed and deepened throughout the story. On the flip side of the coin, the main antagonist, N, and his family are just as much a joy to watch. Daro Idaro takes his time to humanize most of its cast, including Fujita and Ebisu, the Jesse and James of the group, Shin and Noi, the monster duo that cleans up most of the messes that arise in N's plans, as well as N himself, a fungus-loving elite magician that rules a huge commercial empire in the sorcerer world. Together they act as a way for us to sympathize with the sorcerers, as we fall in love with their comparably quirky personalities constantly playing off of each other. But the show encapsulates more than just the main protagonists and the antagonists. There are many reoccurring and side characters that flesh out the world of Doro Doro. People like the doctors Kazukabe and Vox have long histories with both groups of people, and thus adds more layers to the interactions these characters have with the broader cast. In the end, the weird and occult will overlap with the campy and warm-hearted, giving the show a strong support to rest the overarching story on. Music. The music reflecting the themes shown in the overall tone and atmosphere of this show is a mix of electronic, industrial, metal, punk, and Indian influences. I think I can confidently say that this music is some of the most unique tracks I have heard out of any anime, so immediately I have to give big props to No Name as the main creator of these tracks. Some of the ending tracks, and there are quite a few of for a 12 episode series, or like if you decided to go to a club in a Tim Burton story. Some slap really fucking hard, like a personal favorite, Night Surfing, which has these nice jumpy synth melodies that just make you want to party in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. Some are just weird industrial electronic anthems like Who Am I that just makes you feel like you're infiltrating a torture dungeon. Guess what I'm trying to say is that these ending tracks are all bops, and you need to listen to the Daru Daru ending album. Ending tracks aren't the only thing that is straight jamming, as the ambient tracks at play in all the more intense scenes in this show are all these rusty, large industrial metal jams that highlight many gory fights. Not only that, but most of the characters have their own theme songs. For example, Open the Door is a song that plays whenever N starts to do some fuck shit, and it reflects the world so well. Many of the ambient tracks are like if you decided to have a whole Indian circus train under 9 inch nails. It's weird, it's wild, sometimes it's just crazy noise. The atmosphere is something that I have to commend No Name for, because they absolutely nailed it. And can we also talk about how they made an entire Japanese ballad sung by the voice actor of N to tie into a gag? It sucks, but it's also amazing at the same time. The fact that they went that far to begin with shows that they had fun making this. Animation. Now animation is probably the show's weakest point. If you're at all familiar with Beastars and its animation, there are a lot of similarities between Daro Daro and it. Most of the character designs are CGI 3D renders, so they can be kind of clunky when they try to simulate quick movements. So basically, the fight scenes can come off more like two gorillas bang sticks against each other until one of their heads pop off. But other times, it's fluid and you almost forget that it's 3D at all. On top of that, sometimes when the characters are mostly still, they switch to 2D, where it looks pretty normal. Sometimes, you can't tell when they switch at all. The studio in charge was Mappa, who was behind shows like Yuri on Ice and Inu Yakashi, shows I haven't watched before. But from what I've seen, they have experimented with CGI before, with various results. This is kind of hard to show to judge because it has such a unique approach by combining the two styles. What works for it is that the setting is very gritty and industrial, letting the CGI fed in well when they're not doing anything too taxing. On the other hand, when they tried to do these giant fights, a lot of the movements are just not quite up to snuff to the point that you'd notice. The animation in general is kind of bipolar in that way. Sometimes it's great, and other times it's bad. So I suppose that balances out to average? Though I can say for certain that the CGI is on the better end of the spectrum compared to other shows, so it has that going for it at least. Besides that, the art style of the show has a lot going for it. It'll be thrown from a worn down mega city to a classy shiny mansion, to a steampunk like magic tower, to a sprawling fantasy city with demons flying by. It's gritty and fits well into the general aesthetic of the show's premise. You'll have gore thrown casually whenever it wants, horrendous mutated creatures chowing down on corpses, and a lizard that forces people to find out about its past. You'll see everything you'll ever want to in this show, that's for certain. Fun Factor 
Doro Idoro is a master of making you care for almost all the characters that it throws at you, as well as steadily pulling you into its world. While you start to get to know and understand the struggle a certain character might be facing, suddenly the world will start to expand by introducing some lore, like how sorcerers are different from humans biologically. These struggles of the characters gradually build up into a violent series of events that beg for your attention as all hell starts to break loose. When a fight does break out, you're more focused on the clash of personalities and intentions than the sometimes clunky movements. Plus the light and cute moments of people like Ibisu make the world of Doro Idoro more human as you watch these people make the best of their lives in the best way they can. Not only that, but the story will not be afraid to leave Chung's information gathered from various characters out in the open for the viewers to try and piece together the puzzle for themselves. For example, the N family might discover something related to Cayman's past, but then Cayman will vaguely remember something from a completely different perspective, continuously making you question what is real and who might be related to who. The show does this enough to have you continuously engaged in the story. But at the same time, I couldn't help but feel like I was missing something. Perhaps it's because they left things wide open for a season 2 and there is a lot of information to go over. Not only that, but the flow of events seemed to be a bit random. I suppose the one itch that didn't get a reasonable scratch for me is why N was so invested in finding out who changed Cayman's head. I guess he was interested in finding strong mages, but I guess that just didn't satisfy me enough especially when he goes around doing other things at the same time. Later on, it makes more sense about why he wants to mess with our protagonist though. I love the music, I love the premise, I love the characters, and I loved most of everything that it gave me. It's just a snag and sometimes complicated strings of events that get me to think more than usual about an anime story and figuring out what is what. I might check out the manga, however, to see if there are possible things left out or that I didn't catch the first time, which is something that most shows can't make me do very often. Conclusions With fantastic music, characters, and a gripping storyline, Doro Hidoro is a thrill to behold for its entire runtime. Though the animation might not be top-notch, it still has its moments. The dark atmosphere and gritty tone make for an excellent detective-like narrative to thrive in a world of screwed-up magic casters. I'm going to give Dorhi Doro an 8 and a half out of 10 and a heavy eye on the next season. For other recommendations, if you enjoy the darker gore fest action, might I suggest Helsing Ultimate. For something that has the same level of mystery as well as being dark, perhaps the promised Neverland might be up your alley. Have you seen Dorohi Doro? Leave a comment below about your thoughts. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and consider subscribing. I've just started making regular content with a review every week, so anything to help me grow the channel would be greatly appreciated. With that being said, I'm Zio, and I'll see you in the next one.